Hello. Welcome to the session um, with the Joshes. Uh, um, apologies that um, we all lost our voice a little bit after last night. I guess that's, that's what's happening every, in every conference, you know. Um, so we're going to talk about Elasticsearch and Drupal. Um, start from introducing ourselves. My name is Joshua Lee. I'm a Drupal developer. I'm based in Canberra. So in my entire Drupal life, I'm dealing with the government. And this is Dr. Josh Reed. Yeah, hi. Um, so yeah, so I'm Josh as well. Um, yeah, so I'm a technical support engineer with Elastic, which means that I just get to work with a lot of awesome people and helping them do awesome things um, through the use of this Elastic stack we have, which I'll go into a bit more. I had a PhD in astrophysics, and I did research a long time ago, but that's, that's far behind me. So don't ask me about that. All right, I'll, I'll jump in and... Um, um, Dr. Josh Rich will introduce Elasticsearch later. Um, so, the Drupal we know, um, yeah, it's really popular now. And um, if you guys read the blog from Dries, that you guys know that Nasdaq just adopted Drupal 8 in their uh, investor relation website. That's big, yes. And from my experience, that the government like to use Drupal. Um, for example, the um, biosecurity website in Department of Agriculture, they put all their um, biosecurity news in Drupal. And the ABCs and SBS, they all use Drupal to store their news. E-commerce, of course, that's really popular. Um, if you guys have been into the session that my friend Scott Anderson was giving about ADES, everything, pretty much, people like to put into Drupal. Why? Because it's awesome. And yes, you know, we have a lot of data in Drupal. The way that we keep the data, you know, structured is, you know, everyone knows taxonomy terms, views, and if you're lucky enough, you just install Facet API with Search API, and that will actually give you the block that you can place on the sidebar, hopefully, that you can actually categorize data based on different fields or properties of that entity. And anyone use I'm pretty sure everyone uses entity reference module or reference module. And I, I've seen people using both in the same content type. I don't know why. But you know, when people started to use entity reference module or you know, node reference or user reference, there's a kind of like a structure like a, you know, likely you have a parent and you have children between the content type or entities. And for most of the cases, or if you're using field collection, I know that people tend to put the entity reference field or you know, whatever kind of reference field into a field collection. And for most of the cases, field collection is not really, you know, it's unlimited value. Uh, it's not really you know, set only one value for that kind of times. And similar to program module. Um, also, flag module is another entity that provides a flag entity that allows people to subscribe to whichever node. Um, with Everything you installed in your content type, you know, two content types or whatever in your site, it's kind of like hard to find out the right, the, the right entity you want to find. For example, if I want to find out the reference entity in whichever content type that happened to be in one of the field collection field, is I don't really know where can I find it. After I have this kind of like complicated content type, my manager can come. You know, can I get a report of our website? Um, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> because, well, that means a lot. That can, I, that can be, you know, I can give the total number of each content type to my manager so he knows what's going on in your website. Or um, maybe I just add another filter on top of it, you know, per term. Maybe he's happier. Or if we happen to have organic groups, you know, site and you know I, I can just give you know how many nodes per group or how many users per group. But I don't think he likes that because it's just boring numbers and you know just a list. For most of the terms that yeah. um, the bosses doesn't really have any technical background. All they want to know is a nice paragraph uh, a nice diagram that can comp you can compare with the number of each content type, perhaps. Uh, by the way, this nice diagram I got from the Elasticsearch website. 
or in the case that you have parents and children relationship between the two entities in Drupal, that, you know, this case can always happen in our real life, that client may just remove the parents somehow, that make the children often. And uh, sometimes you know, it depends on how you compose your module, then that will recent errors. Um, so the manager would like to know how many contents, you know, in percentage that is often. In this case, you know, there are too many often children. And sometimes the client jump on board. You know, um, I want to have a visualization dashboard. And I don't really know what I want in the dashboard. I just want a nice dashboard. Um, so they don't really know much about what they want. As long as you give me something nice, you know, to start with. As you give me that dashboard, I will know where to start. That's what I was facing, you know, in the client. I feel like I'm talking too much about the uh, PM thing. Um, I was, and, and, and that, that's another thing, you know, I, I can't really name the, the boss, but, you know, they, they always want to export it and print it and because they want to scan it and, you know, email to whoever. Um, that's what I thought after I got this request. Um, first thing, maybe I'll just, you know, dive into my MySQL and uh, join, I don't know how many tables, um, find out those numbers at least. Um, or if the requirement is easy enough for me, I can just you know, use a relationship in the views. And the, of course, you know, we can use, um, what is that module called? You can generate the CSV from views. Um, and luckily enough, we have Fast API installed. Right, so we have a lot of blocks based on different categories. Oh, that's actually giving me a lot of nice aggregated data. I can actually pass that URL to my boss. So he may just you know, do it himself. And I heard about D3 module. Um, I'm not sure if you, anyone of you use D3 module. Uh, D3 module is available in Drupal 7. I'm not sure about Drupal 8. And it has an integration with the views. So if the views is e easy enough, then um, D3 module can actually generate a simple diagram for you. Print friendly, yeah. I'll try to print that out in a PDF. So um, all of these jobs, I feel like okay, that's just one single report. I feel like I, I need to spend like two weeks or something. Um, before I talked to my manager, I had a drink with this guy. Um, he actually taught me something different. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I was actually yeah, it's probably more than one drink actually. Um, yeah, so I got the clicker. Oh. Yeah, cheers. So um, I might just start with an audience poll, because I love audience polls. Um, who's heard of Elasticsearch? Cool, a lot of people. Who's heard of Logstash? Cool, some less people. Who's heard of Kibana? What about Beats? Okay, dropping down. Cool, cool, cool. So let's talk about Elastic. Um, all of those things I just mentioned um, now fall under what we call a company we call Elastic. Um, we used to be called Elasticsearch because um, we used to just have essentially one product, which was Elasticsearch. Um, now we have a whole bunch of products, which we just sort of pulled around through, and a bunch more, which we've also got. Um, but at, a, at our core, we're an open source company. Um, we have around 70,000 community members. We love our community. Um, we're on Discuss and IRC all the time, talking with them getting pull requests from them, they're filing issues, it's great, you know, like our community really helps us out and we thrive and live with that community, which is really awesome. We have like ridiculous amounts of product downloads across our stack, like, you know, like people are just using Elasticsearch all over the place and, it, and working in support, it's, I'm just always amazed at what our customers are doing and what people are trying to do with Elasticsearch and the rest of the stack as well, it just blows my mind the use cases they find out of it. And that's, that's, you know, and on the commercial side, we have, you know, people who rely on us for support. So to help them out with, like, not only, you know, like when it's something is on fire, which hopefully doesn't happen very often, uh, but also for, like, you know, helping them design and architect a solution with that stack. Um, so that's what we are. You know, we're, we're trying to help you people, you know, with this, get this, like, lots of this data, put it into some kind of way which they can search, aggregate, visualize it, um, filter it, enrich it, do all these kind of things with their data, like take it in some format, maybe just take it raw, just stick it somewhere where they can then sort of like 
access it. Because basically a lot of people nowadays, you're all probably facing this situation where you've got too many data sources, you've got all sorts of like information coming at you and it's just too much to process manually. You can't sit there tailing logs anymore. You can't sit there, you know, like trying to analyze your data by hand, you know. You have to have some way of like filtering and searching through it. And um, that's where we can sort of help. So as I mentioned, and as we just polled there, we have like this whole stack. So did another poll, did anyone used to, has anyone heard of the elk stack? Cool, 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 cool. So we used to call it the elk stack, which is really cool. But now we've got all these other products here. So we've got like Beats and Cloud. And you know, like elk is an acronym that stands for Elasticsearch Log Stash Cabana. What do we do? Like, you know, like how do we call it? Do we call it Belk, Elk B? You know, like, yeah, I've got an elk bee here, but yeah, it's like, you know, this is just getting madness. And then we add a C in there, maybe we add an X in for our X pack, our commercial offering. It's starting to become crazy. So what we like to do now is we just like to call it the elastic stack. And the elastic stack is composed of all of these things. At its core is these open source products, Kibana, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Beats, all open source. Um, you can go and download them, Apache license, Apache 2 license. Um, go and download them, play with them. They've got all the nice cool features, which I'll be showing you in a demo a bit later. Um, if you want to like, have it hosted, like you don't want to worry about the management of that kind of stuff, you can use our Elastic Cloud offering. Um, that's basically Elasticsearch and Kibana is hosted for you. So you just throw data at it and you can just have Kibana to do visualizations of it. And then on the side there, in addition, when you like, basically buy a support subscription, which means you get someone like me helping you out, um, you basically get access to some more commercial features for you. But we won't talk about that today. We'll be talking about basically the traditional elk stack. I'll let, I'll let it slide for today. Um, so yeah, so as I said, like, you know, it just amazes me like what people are using it for. Like a lot of people probably, who, uses, who used it for a, like a logging solution, just sticking logs into Elasticsearch? Maybe one or two people? Yeah, cool, cool. So that's, you know, that's like a pretty bread and butter sort of solution for us. But, you know, we're seeing more and more use cases and partly what we're going to talk about today is like this operational analytics and business, business informatics like kind of stuff, you know, where you've got your managers coming at you um, to, you know, like they want reports, they want to see how the site is performing and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then at the same time, you've got your users and that kind of stuff that, you know, you're like, you know, you have a lot of data and you, you want to give it to your users as like fast, and you want the users to find that information really fast. I think I was in a talk um, yesterday where they were talking about the attention span of modern humans. It's like eight seconds or something like that. So you kind of want you know that information to appear there within eight seconds. So search is probably the best way to do it. And you know this like and this covers a lot of different people. You know, like in your organization, like you know when we're talking about logging, that's you guys. Maybe you're looking at those logs, the performance of your website, you know, your, your Drupal watchdog, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, your managers, they want to know some of that information in a more condensed and pretty format. And then your users, they just want to access the data really quickly. So, yeah, so, like, that's a pretty much an overview of Elastic, um, the stack, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sorry, it's waffling on. It's a little bit, um, I guess, like, high level, you know. What does it mean? That's, I guess, what we're after, you know, like, here. Like, maybe um, if I can just show you some demos and some pretty um, pictures and things like that, that'll, like, basically get it across a little bit better. So let's start off with knowing our audience. Um, so the people we're going to be talking about today, and which Josh just talked about earlier, was basically two types of people. You've got your managers and your users. And I don't put these pictures up here to disparage these people because we're also these people. Like, that's me on the left when I'm trying to use a website, you know? Like, oh, I just want to know the information, you know? Don't show me, like, you know, all this flash and stuff like that. Just give it to me as quick as possible. That's what I want. I don't have the time to, like, look through, you know, all your pretty pictures and that, that kind of stuff, you know? I want, you know, to get to it as fast as possible. And at the same time, I'm also the person on the right, you know? I like pretty pictures. Um, sometimes I don't understand what's behind the pretty pictures, but I do like them. So I like my charts and graphs. So yeah, so know who you're trying to like target with this information. So with that in mind, let's talk about the search aspect first. So this is where I guess like users and managers sort of like can both like rely on this kind of like a uh, feature. Um, in terms of Elastic, um, that's Elasticsearch. That's, you know, for search. Um, and why would you use Elasticsearch? Um, well, because uh, it's really fast. We do what we call near real time search which basically means you index a document and it's pretty much available to be searched on pretty much like, I think the default is one second. So within a second you can get it. Um, in terms of like, you know, like regular searches on your website, people get like basically down to the millisecond, you know, response time for their searches. Um, so yeah, so it has that near real time sort of um, capabilities. Um, it's highly available and it's dis distributed out of the box. 
And what that means is basically you can stick Elasticsearch on a single server, um, and then once it starts, like, you know, the resources there start to get a bit constrained and that kind of stuff, you can just spin up another server, stick Elasticsearch on that, and those two servers can talk to each other, and they'll just spread the data across them. So basically, you can build out a solution as your data grows really easily because we just have that built in for you, and it's, like, ridiculously easy to use. Um, it's nice for developers because we just have this nice RESTful JSON API. It's JSON in, JSON out. You talk to it, JSON, it speaks back to you in JSON. It's just over HTTP, so you can do all that nice optimization of you know, HTTP and all that kind of stuff, so it's really easy to talk to. And we have a whole bunch of client libraries for all different languages. PHP is there, Perl's there, um, Go's there, um, so it's all over the place. Um, and then finally, we have like, a little bit of analytics and aggregations on top, and I'll show you some of that, um, mostly through a tool um, which we call Kibana, and I'll show you a bit of that a little bit later. So in terms of the search aspects, um, who uses Wikipedia? So as an example of how, what you can do with Elasticsearch is Wikipedia, that search you're typing in that search box, that's going to hit Elasticsearch. It's going to be sending those results to Elasticsearch and it's going to be sending them back to you. Um, that autocomplete you see in uh, Wikipedia, that's also Elasticsearch doing that autocomplete functionality for you. Um, as another example of another, um, I guess a local um, shop which is using us, who uses Seek? Who's using Seek right now? No, I shouldn't say that. Um, who's, user, who's used Seek? Yeah, great, we've all used Seek. We look for jobs, you know, that's how we make our living. Um, well, Seek is, this isn't particularly how Seek are using Elasticsearch. They do use Elasticsearch. They don't use it for this search front end um, right now, um, but I like the Seek website because it's a nice example of faceted search. Instead of you just having a general search box where your user can just type in something and they get a whole bunch of results back, you can filter down the results a little. So the users can like sort of click and choose a few categories and subjects and they can refine their search a little, which is really great. And then finally, as another example, domain. Who uses domain? Awesome. I don't actually use domain. I'm from Canberra and we have this thing called All Homes. We're just like weird, you know? Like all the rest of you use domain and people are, I'm like, what's domain? You know, we're like in our own world. Anyway, domain, they use us for, you know when you do that properties near you kind of search, that kind of thing, or properties near this property? That's all powered by geo um, searches in Elasticsearch. So that's really cool. Um, so there's an example of that there. Um, so on the other side of things, we talked about search, um, and what we're going to talk about a little bit is the, like, the business analytics, those charts and graphs, which our managers love. Um, you can do that with the Elastic Stack as well, using Kibana. Our Kibana is our, like, essentially our visualization tool which sits on top of Elasticsearch. It speaks to Elasticsearch. Um, it actually uses the power of um, aggr our aggregations framework in Elasticsearch. Um, and it basically queries Elasticsearch, um, gets those aggregation results, and makes pretty pictures for you. Um, so, you know, it has all these capabilities of like dynamically filtering down into the data. So everything on the chart is clickable, and I'll show you some examples of that a bit later. Um, you can filter by time, you can fil click on subjects and things like that. It has a nice search box, so you can just do full text search as well. Um, you can share those dashboards. Um, up and coming in a, uh, actually right now in our B5 stack, which we just released um, yesterday or the day before? Yesterday. Um, yeah, so it's basically got a reporting framework, so you can basically schedule reports and have like basic dashboards with a whole bunch of visualizations sent via email to your manager. So basically you can automate yourself out of a job. Um, so yeah, so you can do all this kind of fun stuff with Kibana, and all powered by these aggregations, which are all in Elasticsearch. And there's some examples, and I'll show you some more examples, so we'll just skip that slide. Um, and then, I guess the other thing is, is like, it's all great to talk about like, searching your data and uh, visualizing your data, but how do you actually get it into Elasticsearch? Um, well, we have some tools for that as well. Um, we have Logstash, um, which is some of you have been using, probably mostly for a logging sort of solution. So Logstash is basically like a tool which can go and grab data from all different kinds of sources. It can grab it out of databases, it can grab it out of logs and files, it can listen for like information coming over a TCP stream, it can go and pull another like REST endpoint or another like you know SOAP endpoint or whatever you want. It can do all sorts of crazy stuff. It can take that data, it can manipulate it, filter it, enrich it, um, do all kinds of like crazy stuff with it, add geo information to it, all that kind of stuff and then it can send it off somewhere. It doesn't have to be Elasticsearch, it can send it off to a broker, it can send it off to some other, like uh, NoSQL data stores, it can do all sorts of crazy things. So that's what Logstash can do, it's a very powerful, sort of generic, all-purpose uh, tool for like, sort of getting your data from somewhere and sticking it, hopefully, in Elasticsearch. Um, Beats, that's uh, like, sort of, these are like, I guess, you know, like our, our lovely like, Unix command line utilities, like LS and all that kind of stuff. 
They do one thing, they do it really well. LS lists files and directories. Beats are kind of like that, but for data. So basically they take some data source and they stick an elastic search. So they're like a lightweight version of Logstash. They don't do all the enrichment and filtering and that kind of stuff. They kind of just like basically grab the data source from somewhere and send it off as quickly as possible. So kind of really good to put like in, you know, your endpoints and that kind of stuff where you can't really run up Logstash or it's not really effective. So, and Beats can send to Logstash, so they can work perfectly together if you want to do that filtering. You can send your Beats stuff to Logstash. And then ES Hadoop, I, I won't really talk much about that. That's just basically, you know, if you have HDFS, you can grab data in and out of that. Um, demo data, that's the fun stuff. Let's do that, because that's fun. I'll switch microphones. And I'm going to water. All right. Out of there. Oh, I've got messages. Oh, something failed. Um, all right, let's go. Oh, actually, let's go back to that first. All right, demo data. There we go. So, ABC Local Online um, Stories. So this is like um, some, I better see near the mic so they can record me. So this is basically metadata about a whole bunch of stories written by the ABC Local Online, like basically ABC reporters around Australia. This is just the summary information. So this is basically a URL to a picture, so a photo which went with the story, a little caption about the photo, um, a brief description, uh, the title of the story it was associated with, a link to the ABC website which contains the story. So it's just this metadata about it. It also contains, you know, some information like which state reported it, um, the re which station, which local ABC station reported it, um, and some geodata to say, like, the photo was taken, you know, here, the story actually happened here in the middle of the outback or something like that. So it's just like a bunch of metadata, you know, maybe something like you might have in your data store in Drupal or something like that, you know, like which you might search over or, or present in your, in your, in your website. And I just grabbed this off DataGov. So it's up there, you can go grab it as well. The 8,500 uh, 8, records, um, just go and grab it. Pretty small, it's easy to use. CSV file or JSON file, I use the CSV file. Um, and how easy is it to do and use this? Well, it's really easy. So this is basically what I did. It's only three steps. Normally I put a three ste a four steps in there and I have a blank three step and profit, you know, that's the funny joke. Um, but anyway, yeah, no, it's like download the CSV file, I basically indexed the data into Elasticsearch using Logstash. Um, I configured it, you know, basically with, and like, you know, to read the file, do a CSV filter, send it to Elasticsearch. Really simple, really easy to do. The config is really small. I can show anyone later on. I didn't want to show it today because, you know, when you show code on a screen, it's kind of ugly and everyone just like sort of nods off. I will, um, but I will show the code later. Huh? Don't tell that. <laughs> yeah, no, so we, you know, it's a very simple config. So just basically stick it into Elasticsearch. And then I just made some purdy visualizations in Kibana. And I'll show you that dashboard um, right now. And I do apologize because like my laptop is horrible. It's like a Dell and it has this dongle and the resolution gets crazy. So um, Kibana is a bit squished, but we'll have a look at it. So this is Kibana, V5 version of Kibana. And this is the ABC local online dashboard I created. So you can think of this as like, you know, you had this information in your website and maybe your, your um, you want like some interface where maybe like you know your managers or like you know just your devs can sort of like query and look at the data in a more simplified way without going through the website or something like that. Um, so basically, yeah, you can see the data here. I've got like a tile map which contains some geo hashes, geo grids um, of like the density of the stories. So the redder it is, the more stories were reported in that location. I've got a, like just a little bar, uh, bar chart over there which has the state distribution, so the count of stories per state. Um, who likes pie charts? I love pie charts. I don't know why all the hate for pie charts, eh? I love the pie charts. So I do a pie chart of the subjects which were tagged in the stories. And down the bottom there, I've got like the actual pictures. It doesn't quite fit, but I'll scroll around. So um, yeah, and basically this is Kibana. So it's just taking that data and it's just interrogating Elasticsearch in real time for this data. So it just goes and does a search and then presents it on all these charts. All of these charts are div individual aggregations which are sent to Elasticsearch. It gets JSON back. It takes that JSON and renders it, basically using D3, a bit of JavaScript magic, stuff I don't understand, um, but it's really great. Um, and you know, this is all, you can like basically, if you have time-based data, you can filter this by time. Um, so basically you can choose, you know, like the, the time region for it. As I said, it's all searchable, assuming I've got internet. I do. Let's give it a try. Oh, look at that, I've done a whole bunch of searches. Awesome. Let's try Gold Coast. 
Well, there you go. We've got a high density in the Gold Coast um, of stories. For some reason, we've got in the middle of Lake Australia, maybe something to do with gold. Um, and then up in Darwin, maybe they're trying to claim that they've got a Gold Coast up there. But anyway, we can see there's stories about Gold Coast. And we can see, you know, the Queensland State, um, State reported most of these stories. We can see the subject about, you know, human interest, that kind of stuff. And we can see the pretty pictures, you know, like somebody's metal detecting and the caption there, you know, like all these stories about the Gold Coast. Um, likewise, we can search for cattle, because I'm a Queenslander, I can say that. Um, I love that. And yeah, there you go, look, it's all in Queensland. Awesome. Probably up there, that's Rockhampton, beef capital of Australia. Woo! Um, yeah, so there you go. Um, and you know, get the stories back. So it's quickly searching that data and presenting us back that data really quickly. You know, essentially, you know, in almost, you know, what was that, like maybe a second, less than a second? I don't know. Um, and this is all filterable, so I can like go and I want to like, you know, look at stories which are about like rural beef stock cattle and now it's filtering it down even further. I can um, pick, you know, another category. Let's go um, disasters. Maybe I'm a bit morbid. Um, yeah, and it's filtering down the stories even further. It's doing this all in real time, going off to Elasticsearch, querying it, doing this filter, sending the data back, presenting it in a visualization for you. Awesome. Um, so that's like one example of like, you know, some kind of content which is pretty, pretty normal. You know, and like this, this applies across all sorts of different data. So here is like, for example, the LAPD crime data um, for back in, for, I forget what time period this is over, um, a couple of years ago. Um, you can see LAPD and you can do things like filter by crime, you know, where should I not live, you know, maybe like um, resist traffic crimes and you know the graph changes and all that kind of stuff, it updates in real time. So, you know, this is kind of like if you had a bunch of data and you needed to present it internally to like, you know, a different audience, this is something you could give them. They can make these pretty dashboards and graphs and things like that and then they can go and, we don't want a break, um, we can basically, you know, filter this data and they can like play around with it, do all kinds of crazy stuff with it, manipulate and see it in real time, which is really awesome. Um, and then just, you know, like obviously, oh, oh, what have I done here? Terrible with my mouse. You know, obviously you've got like the traditional sort of like Apache logging sort of situation. We've got our nice graph here, you know, like we can see the logs from our like web server. So you can think you could stick your DB log in there or, you know, your Apache log, stick it all into here and you can have your internal, you know, like dashboard to monitor your website from a backend sort of way. Um, you know, like, in, again, this is all filterable. The other cool thing about all this is when you like to go and filter these things, you can export this data into a CSV file so you can go and take it and manipulate it and analyze it in a d another place if you want to. Um, but yeah, so you have these nice dashboards um, to like, you know, to look at your data. And then just as another example, you know, like going back to sort of the manager side, side of things, you know, your Twitter analytics. So this is actually our Twitter feed, like taking our Twitter feed of, I think, the hashtag Elastic um, and Elasticsearch and maybe our products hashtags. Basically looking at it over the last 60 days and we can see the distribution of where the tweets are coming from, you know, what people, other tags people are using, um, some various graphs about it, you know, and as I hover over I can see like, you know, these values are changing, it's all dynamic, all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, so there's a lot of different like ways you can like basically if you look at extracting this data out of Drupal or whatever form, wherever it's coming from um, and sticking it to Elasticsearch, it can be quite powerful. Um, so, and that was all done, all of those things are basically done with um, Logstash. Where's my clicker, there it is. Um, so yeah, so, when you think about it, like if you've, yeah, we've got those two different types of audience. You know, you've got your data sitting there which your users are going to search over and you're going to have a nice search box somewhere, maybe some faceted search and some filters and things for your users. But then at the same time, you can, you know, you can get that data out, put it in Elasticsearch and you can give your managers and that kind of thing, Kibana, or your internal users, you know, in different groups, access to that Kibana. And they, they can go and generate their own reports and visualizations and all sorts of, do their own searches and that kind of stuff. You don't have to design another website because, you know, in some ways you don't need to maybe go to that full-on website sort of design for those internal users. So, yeah, you've got this power to basically, um, you know, I like, I guess, please both sides of the story. Um, so with that in mind, I guess, like, you know, there is, um, you know, Solar is a big thing in the Drupal community. Um, and so how does Elasticsearch compare to Solar? We're essentially the same product. You know, we're both based on Apache Lucene. Um, you know, we have a, like, we, we basically, I won't, I won't disparage Solo, it's a great product. Um, but what Elasticsearch has, it's based on Apache Lucene. It has a nice RESTful JSON API. Um, it's built to be distributed out of the box. 
Um, it has these real-time search capabilities. And most importantly, we have this aggregations framework on top. So you can actually do things like histograms and averages and pipeline aggregate, uh, aggregations, so derivatives and all sorts of crazy sort of mathematical things. Um, you can do that in Elasticsearch. You just tell Elasticsearch, I want you to aggregate over this search result, and it will give you back that aggregation result as well. Compared to like things like a relational DB, you know, our, our Postgres or whatever we're using for our data store for our Drupal, I see that as complementary. Um, MySQL and, and relational DBs in general, they make different guarantees about your data. Um, we make guarantees around search. We want the search to be really fast. MySQL and that kind of things, they make more guarantees around storage, you know, so basically to like guarantee that your data is there and it's correct, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I see there's a complementary thing there. And basically, you're going to have a lot of data. So you'll probably have more data in MySQL and less data in Elasticsearch, because there's only probably a limited amount of data you actually want to search on. You don't, you don't want, in all cases, to search on every single bit of your data. There's just a certain fields and information you probably want to search on. So there's a complementary use case there. And they're completely different tools. There's no way you can say this versus that. So there is some, there's some complementary use cases there. And that's likewise for any kind of storage, like other NoSQL things like Couchbase and Mongo, um, whatever you like to use. So yeah, so the bottom line, um, and hopefully through this demo and that kind of stuff, is you know use the right tool for the job. And in this case, what Josh is going to talk about um, here in how to integrate it more into Drupal um, is that it's Elasticsearch. I'll hand it back over. Thank you, Josh. Um, uh, Elasticsearch is fantastic from what, I, what you said, um, but I don't think that actually helped me so far because you know everything Josh was, was demo you know uh, was talking about that has a condition that we have to have the content in Elasticsearch. How can we get the content from Drupal to Elasticsearch? Um, I'm going to talk about that. Otherwise, we can't use. Yeah, you know, we're all from Drupal community, and there's a sentence in our community saying that there's a module for that. In fact, there's, there are three. But um, those are not really completed. Um, so the, the, the first one, Elasticsearch Connector, that's fully working in Drupal 7, and it has different components. The first one is the wrapper for the Elasticsearch PHP library. So um, using that wrapper, you can actually use the API to uh, perform a CRUD or search in Drupal. It also has a, a component, component to actually ship the watchdog log into Elasticsearch. Also, it has the search API uh, integration. It has the views integration, all available in Drupal 7, not Drupal 8. So well, last time I was trying to install this module in my Drupal 8 site, that actually broke my site. Um, so it's under development. Um, the second one, search. API, Elasticsearch, is not available in Drupal 8 yet. Um, last time I was checking uh, the progress, it was kind of like a quite far behind. The third one is, I would think that's the most uh, closest to the production. Uh, it's called uh, Elast Elasticsearch Helper. What it does is it provides a plugin in Drupal 8 and that plugin give you the full function about you know the crowd and search function in Drupal, uh, and that provide the wrapper. What you need to do in your side is you need to create your own custom module. In your module, you implement that plugin. You don't have to do anything in your module. You just implement that plugin. That API becomes available. And in the module file in Elasticsearch Helper, it has you know all of the entity hooks in there. So uh, when you update the entity, then uh, it can fire up um, a query to update the entity in Elasticsearch, um, such as that. But all of those three, they all need work. And um, uh, I do not really see um, you know, currently a lot of active works on that. So um, well, you know, we're all the Drupal community. and. Um, we should actually contribute to those modules so we can actually leverage the functions from Elasticsearch. If you don't really want to use those modules, of course you, you don't have to. Um, the Elasticsearch PHP library is maintained by Elastic Company, and they have you know the, the library is well documented. So if you want to create your own module, all you need to do is just you know add the library into your composer file. So um, just 
use the composer to install this library, and in your custom module, you can just start it to use uh, the um, Elasticsearch PHP API. Um, that provide the full CRUD and search and including the aggregation APIs. Um, oh, you didn't really show the code. Right. So uh, if you guys are familiar with the query that in Elasticsearch is really just um, a um, JSON that you can actually convert it into an array in our module. And uh, um, the key can be, you know, uh, aggregation and you want if you want to aggregate by whichever term or whichever field, you just put the key in there and, uh, you know, the value in there. So pretty much just passing the arrays to Elasticsearch and it will just return the JSON. That's the code example. Um, yeah, I don't want to show too much about the code. Uh, this example is actually from Elasticsearch helper module. So what you see here is really just three hooks. And in those three hooks, we actually use a service and to you know, index the entity or we insert the entity. That's how we trigger um, the performance in Elasticsearch. And there's another way. You know, uh, Josh has been talking about uh, using Logstash to um, index the content into Elasticsearch. Um, Logstash is a wonderful tool. It's open source and is written in Ruby. Um, I'm not a Ruby programmer, so I can't really read that, unfortunately. Um, but it has a lot, a lot of plugins. One of the plugins is called Drupal DB Log. That's really awesome. So what it does is pretty much shipped our watchdog log into Elasticsearch automatically. So a log actually is a command line tool. Is that correct, right? Yeah, so all in your command line, you just need to run the query in Logstash, and that will actually read your Drupal site and ship all your watchdog into Elasticsearch. Also, um, Logstash has another plugin called RSS Reader. Um, we all know that we can actually com we can configure our views into to export RSS feed. So if we can manage to actually expose our RSS feed from our views. The reader from Logstash can read it directly and import that into our Elasticsearch uh, database. And this morning, I just learned something new from George. Um, there's another plugin called HTTP Polar. Yeah, HTTP Polar. Yeah, um, that's actually more advanced that um, you can actually pass the URL to the HTTP Polar. You know, that URL can be JSON format, can be whatever format. And in the logstash configuration file, you define which field I want to, you know, push to Elasticsearch, or you can create a filter in there. So I want to convert this, for example, um, in Drupal 7. I'm not sure if you guys know that. In Drupal 7, if you do an entity load, and in Elasticsearch, what it sees, if it's an NID, node ID, what we see is actually a string. It's not really an integer. So um, logstash provide a filter that you can you can actually create your mapper. If it's a node ID and you need to tell Elasticsearch it's a integer, it's not a string, something like that. And then yeah, and I guess just finally, and the other way you can get it is the really rough and tumble way is like Logstash has a JDBC input. So if you, your database has a JDBC driver, you can just hook that up to there to find a select tool, whatever query to like grab the data out of out of your database and stick in Elasticsearch. And do the filtering and everything you can do magic you can do with logs. Or if well. you if you want to um, filter the data before you actually reach Elasticsearch, you can do it from the the module level, from the application level. All right. Um, any front end developer here? Roy, um, I kind of like I know what are you guys thinking about. Um, is you guys probably thinking about you know we have a really nice interface from Elasticsearch because it's all JSON. All you need to do is just to actually send a query to uh, Elasticsearch. Um, that's possible that you can actually create an Angular app and use that app to contact Elasticsearch directly. Yes, that's possible because Elasticsearch provides a really mature um, JavaScript library. Um, and also, I think there is a plugin or what do you call mod, uh, module in Angular that's available that integrate um, D3 and Elasticsearch. That actually makes that possible that I just want to have a local browser app, and that app can actually contact my Elasticsearch database 
there's no Drupal stability here, but we can't do that. Um, why? I was trying to, well, what's around here? I don't know. Just wiggle a little bit. Did you try hitting it really hard? I haven't, I haven't done you anything. You keep talking and I'll, I'll fix it. Yeah, right. Um, oh, good time. Um, yeah, I was trying to you know, play around the, the um, Angular. So um, I fired up my own server and I installed Elasticsearch in there and I started a really, really simple Angular app, you know, just pretty much gave, gave us some filters and uh, some drop downs. I choose whatever drop down, it will return the JSON. I'll use the, this way to generate a really nice pie chart or whatever chart I want to because I just created a drop that was working. I was really happy. After that night, I got, I got an email from my service provider saying that my server is down because I, I, I left my Elasticsearch exposed for overnight. I'm not going to tell you the IP though. Um, so, look um, it up in Shodan. Um, we, we, we can't do that. It's too risky to actually expose your Elasticsearch database to all of the browsers. So what we need to do is to actually provide a wrapper in the middle to do at least the authentication. That's what I thought. Um, well, I was using um, Symfony to create that, create that wrapper, but since Drupal 8 actually is Symfony, and um, it is really simple. I'm pretty sure you guys all know how to create an endpoint in Drupal 8 to um, provide a wrapper. One of the modules, well, two of the modules I was mentioned about, um, the Elasticsearch helper and uh, Elasticsearch connector, they all provide a nice UI that you can actually type in your authentication details in Drupal, and that will actually do the authentication job for you. So I reckon, you know, why don't we just install those modules in Drupal 8 and we have all our you know, custom modules provide the endpoint. So our Angular app will contact our RESTful endpoint in Drupal 8 and Drupal will handle the rest. We'll convert you know, whatever queries you type in and you, into Elasticsearch and do the, do the search. And you can use D3 or you, know, you can use Angular or whatever Polymer to render whatever um, pie chart or bar chart you like to. Questions? Yes? Have you thought about using the GraphQL wrapper on top of Elasticsearch? Or have you used the graph? So uh, Elasticsearch has its own graph API. Um, it doesn't use GraphQL or anything similar to graph. It's, it works a little bit differently. Um, sort of like, uh, think of it like, you know, doing searching through those nodes and things like that and looking for the um, uncommonly common connections. Um, so rather than getting super nodes back, you sort of get like the actual relevant sort of connections because this is all based on essentially search, so it's all about relevancy between these two nodes. So there is language, it's all JSON as well. So there's actually a whole API built in on Elasticsearch and we actually have a UI as well. Um, so you can go and explore it and, you know, make your pretty graph like diagrams and things. Uh, not that I'm aware of, because Graph is so new. So um, yeah, I'm sure you can. Like I mean, it's an API, just you can go and hack on top. Kibana is is built by Angular. It's using Angular and D3. So um, there's if you want to, well, for example, if you want to display a nice diagram from Kibana to your website, there are different ways. That one, the easiest way is actually Kibana can export an iframe. Then you just copy the iframe to your site. But that's static. If you want to display the dynamic data uh, into your site. Uh, you can either grab, you can, you can export the query from Kibana that is used to generate the diagram, use that query so you know, you know what query to query Elasticsearch and uh, uh, use your own front end library, which, whichever D3 or something, um, to render the J, uh, JSON um, into different charts. Yeah, so um, in the next version of Kibana, or actually in this version of Kibana, because we've got V5 out now. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, we, we will be building upon like a plugin framework for Kibana. So the visualizations I showed there, you know, pie charts, cool, um, bar charts and all that kind of stuff, you'll be able to add your own visualizations in there. Some of our community members are already doing that with radar charts and swim lanes and all kinds of really cool visualizations. Um, on top of that, we also have a tool called Timeline, um, which allows you to have access to more of the advanced features of Elasticsearch, like pipeline aggregation, so you can do those derivatives and moving averages to smooth out noisy data and see rates of change and that kind of stuff and draw all kinds of crazy like um, charts, you know, more complicated charts. So yeah, there's a lot of work going on right now for that kind of stuff. 
And um, I think people can actually contribute to Kibana using Angular, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Kibana is an open source product. Just go to on GitHub. Yeah. Um, my question is maybe you know there are some other questions about that. Is Bit and uh, um, is, is Bit and the other the other input to open source? Or? Yeah, so like Logstash, Kibana, Beats, Elasticsearch, all open source, right. all Apache two point zero. You want to talk about the uh, conference? Yeah. It's, um, well, if anyone's got questions, questions, more questions. No. Yeah. All right. Um, towards the end, you were talking about the, the front end and. Yes. Um, Yeah. What would, what would be the easiest way to develop a component outside of Drupal to handle those requests and write that back into the I was, I was using Express in Node.js. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, I think there's a library from Elasticsearch in Node.js that actually uh, provide the, um, um, the full repo in, in Express. So it's really easy to fire that up. And uh, um, I found that was quite useful. But um, it really depends on the requirements. Um, so if if you can actually handle the, the traffic in Drupal 8, that, that's, that's cool. Um, because Drupal 8 actually gave you the, the, the ability to actually manage the data. You know, that's what Drupal does. Yeah, so and elaborating further on that, our language clients often have support for things like connection pooling and that kind of stuff. So you can, because you know, Elasticsearch distributes, you'll have a whole bunch of nodes. So you'll just like, you know, if you're using one of these language clients, you'll just say, oh, all these IPs connect to these, and it'll just round robin the requests out to them. And then in Elasticsearch, there's also architectures you can build out where you can have things like nodes which just act as coordinators to send queries off into the cluster and that kind of stuff. So it's pretty easy to build this up at scale in both your application and also in Elasticsearch. So there's plenty of architectures you can go through, and you can go down that rabbit hole really fast. So there's no more questions. I'll just mention, just quickly, we, um, we're going to have a tour in Sydney. Um, Shai, the founder, he's actually going to be in Sydney um, in November the 29th. So come and see him. I have to talk after him. I'll be really nervous. Um, but yeah, Shai, you can go and hug him. You probably can't hug him, but you can go and see him. He's a real person. So come see us in November the 29th, Elasticon, a day of like things. Our customers will be talking. We'll be there. All our tech guys in Australia will be there. You can ask them all sorts of questions. And then next year, if you can make it, San Francisco. Um, we're, we're in San Francisco, a big user conference conference, three days, it's going to be intense. All the developers are going to be there. So if you'd anyone like, you know, who wrote code which you don't like, you can go and smack them in the face. So there you go.